It's really common for 720s to get a manifold leak right between the manifold and the collector. And then it's common to also go in there and try and tighten it up a little bit and fix it, which sometimes works. But a lot of times those bolts have backed off and gotten stuck. And when you try and tighten them up, it's really common to break a stud. So today we're gonna take a look at fixing that. Just to even crack the unit open, you're gonna need two gaskets. You're gonna need the manifold, the cylinder head gasket. Um, usually I like to get ones that have more metal in them, like this collector gasket has a lot of metal in it. I like that kind more, but that wasn't available in town. So you need manifold the head gasket, and you also need the collector gasket, because we're gonna be taking the collector off today. We're also gonna be using some new hardware to replace the studs that are damaged and broken. This is a grade 10.9 steel bolt. It's coated. I'm using a lock washer to keep it from backing out. It's around two inches long, which is long, but that is what they had at the supply center, grade 10.9, which doesn't give us a lot to try and remove on the broken one when we get that one out. The first step is actually to wash your truck. So I've gone and washed all of this out and then I went underneath and gave it a nice hose off down there because while you're in there, you're gonna be getting stuff falling off and even if you wash it, it's still gonna fall on you. It's gonna be super fun having all that stuff fall on you. But if you wash it, it makes it a little better. Before crawling under your truck, make sure to install a Dotson approved parking brake. Now, as you can see, when the uh, stud broke off up in there, somebody, uh, me, installed a beautiful C-clamp right there just to hold things together. And believe it or not, that actually worked. Uh, but it doesn't seal perfectly, so I'm taking it off to fix it right today. Um, it's also worth noting that if you do this when your engine's warm, sometimes the metal can be expanded a little bit, make things easier to take apart. Also makes it really hot, which makes it extra fun to work on. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and take that C-clamp off now. Okay, now we've got some bolts to remove. Uh, sometimes it helps to soak those in a product to loosen them up a little bit ahead of time, but they're gonna be pretty stuck on there no matter what you do. The one on the back close to the firewall is the easiest to remove. You just put your socket on the end of all your extensions and remove it with a breaker bar or an impact or whatever you got. Um, the bolt head size on those is gonna be all different. This one's a bolt, some of them are studs, some of them are 19 millimeters, some of them are 14 millimeters, so you just kind of got to go with the flow and see what's on there. It's usually been rearranged a few times. The back bolt came out nicely. It was pretty much instant. We're still going to replace it even though it looks to be in decent condition. I want to put the better ones in there. The middle one you're pretty much going to need a wobble for. I'm going to be using this guy. It's pretty difficult to get an angle on it because of how it meets up there. The middle one came out pretty easy thanks to that wobble. Now we're gonna go up top and take the bolts out that go into the cylinder head and the uh, nuts off of those studs. We'll move on to our next step. To break these manifold bolts loose by hand just to get things going. If you have an EGR installed, you want to remove that on the intake manifold side. It's frequently easier to get that bolt off. And then if you have a warm air assembly, you'll just need to unplug that from your warm intake side. It's often easier on the intake side, less stuck. So now that I've got all that stuff removed, you should be able to just lift this manifold out of here. Be careful in case it's warm. That old gasket is pretty well stuck on there. There's the problem right there, that broken stud or bolt, not sure which, gonna have to get that out of there. That's gonna be a good time. We also need to clean all of this off. I'm using this right angle die grinder and these poly brushes. These are softer than steel and aluminum, so they just disintegrate them instead of destroying the surface, but they clean the surface really nicely too. If you don't have one, just use this green scotch bright pad, maybe a razor blade to get that stuff. Maybe a little carbon choke cleaner. We just want a nice clean mating surface for our gasket. Wow, that cleaned up easier than normal. These guys right here are probably one of your most difficult gasket cleaning situations. Thankfully, the 
there's a lot of width here, so they tend to be a little more forgiving, but you wanna get them clean. Over here on the cylinder head side, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these, and also pull out this old collector gasket. See, there's not a lot of that left. Okay, got those all cleaned up. Uh, maybe a little more work to do there in a couple places. Could run over with some carbon choke cleaner too, just to make sure everything's nice and tidy. Don't have a lot of material here. This is gonna be kind of a tricky weld to make. I need to weld this nut in there and then back it off. This nut has a great big giant flange on it. I actually need to get a little closer with the welder in there. So I need to actually, I'm actually gonna grind this flange off, which is counterintuitive, make the nut smaller, less material there, but it's what I gotta do. So I'm gonna make this nut thinner. Uh, this is a rusty nut, which is actually an advantage. That's what I was looking for. With modern hardware, a lot of times it's just imported in big bins and all you get to pick is diameter and thread pitch. You don't get to pick material. So half of it's zinc and steel all thrown in the same bucket sometimes. So I just went through my parts collection and looked for an old nut that was rusty because I knew that had a high concentration of steel. You really don't want to weld zinc. It's kind of nasty. So I'm going to be using this old rusty nut. I'm just going to weld it on there. Got the ground clamp right here on this little piece of scrap steel. I'm going to put the nut right here. Weld it to this piece of scrap steel to hold it steady. Then weld the inside of the nut to what's left of the thing we're removing here. Um, I did not put the ground clamp on the manifold because I want the electricity rooting through here to keep these as two separate pieces. Sometimes when your ground clamp is on a different workpiece and they're just close together, you can actually get a little tiny bit of fusion when the electricity jumps and I do not want that between this manifold and this um, bolt. Probably not gonna happen, but it's good to play on the safe side. So I'm gonna weld it to the piece of scrap and that's just gonna hold it right there perfectly for me. Then if it's not exactly where I want it, I can adjust it forcefully. Um, we're gonna preheat this manifold with a plumbing torch just to keep everything warmed up and we also wanna cool it down slowly. Cast iron like this manifold is really strong, but it can be a little sensitive at times so we don't wanna crack it. So we're gonna warm it up with a plumbing torch, weld it, cool it down with a plumbing torch, just to help it be more slow and even. Everything's nice and warmed up now. Gonna go ahead and do a little welding. I don't have a good system for videotaping the welding, so you're gonna have to imagine what that looks like and we'll jump back in after that. All right, we're now tacked in place. Gonna weld the inside now and see what happens. Okay, it's all welded on there now. Now what we want when we extract it is we want the manifold to be warm and expanded. We actually want this to be chilled and shrunk. So we gotta wait a minute for this to cool off. Then we kinda wanna warm this up a little bit and then we're gonna try and extract it. So really a delicate process here and all you've got is a weld and a lot of hope right in there. And it's a, only a 10 millimeter surface to get onto so it's pretty difficult. And it's not really easy out territory. Okay, that did not work. Not enough penetration too far down to reach to it and all of that good stuff. Um, now we gotta get more innovative. Uh, good thing is we didn't really take much material off of the stud here, so we're kinda at net zero. I was a little concerned because this is too small for that technique, but I figured it was worth a shot, and I still think it was worth a shot. It just didn't work. All right, time to get innovative, which lucky for y'all, that's one of my favorite things. Manti Fred. All right, next solution here. Piece of angle iron here, some mild steel. Gonna weld that on there, and we're gonna turn it. See if we can get this thing out. And you might be looking at this weld thinking, wow, that looks like a mess. What's actually going on here is a nice rut around the base of the bolt from the what's left of the bolt to the steel with some lower settings and then a hot run over the top to just bring it all together and hit the center of the bolt there. So kind of looks like a blob, but we'll see if it'll do the trick. Got the manifold set in a bench vise. Now we're gonna try and torque on that piece at angle a little bit. Getting some motion out of it. We're gonna go a little bit and we're just gonna stop. Let it breathe for a second. We're gonna go back. Now we're gonna go forward again. Now I gotta rotate the whole manifold so I can make another turn. So the case there was the bolt was just twisting. 
removed a section of the bolt, the weld was good. It just didn't come all the way out. The only remaining option that I really have is to drill it out. It's not gonna fit in the drill press, so cordless it is, but it's just gonna take forever. All right, we kind of reduced to this level. We're clamped onto the old drill press here. The cordless drill just could not get through all that material. So we're gonna give this a sand. Um, don't let it be said that I don't go to great lengths to save dots and parts. All y'all keyboard mechanics can go ahead and comment on this one if you want to, but this is where we're at. All right, well, that didn't completely go according to plan. So, gonna have to do something about that there. Alrighty, this is a safety glasses recommended to operation here. Well, that worked. Well, Manifold now has three hulls. Fantastic. Um, that was not the best way of doing anything, but it was the only option we had left, and that is a usable Dotson part. So at the beginning of the video, we had these nice, minty, fresh, new, grade 10.9 bolts. Well, they're not gonna fit. And we've moved beyond minty, fresh, nice, grade 10.9. We're now at recycle the grade eight and, and hope that we never have to touch it again. So we're going to be taking a bolt, sticking it in the hole that we made, and calling it a day. Um, if you're not at save old dots and parts that should probably be crushed level, then go ahead and get some nice minty fresh bolts. But but we're not at that level anymore. We're, we're here, and here is not that great. Back at the engine here, just ignore this red massive RTV on the crankcase vent. You can't see it. It's not real. It's just a figment of your nightmares. Now, we're going to put the gaskets on here and the gaskets on the collector. Don't forget the get collector gasket. I've forgotten it and had to install it after putting it. Ooh, it's not fun. So put them both on first, then grab your manifold. Going to grab our not minty exhaust manifold. This is not mint anymore. It is whatever's less than mint. Whatever's less than mint, go ahead and put that in the comments section. Whatever you wanna call less than mint, this is it. All right, now we're gonna insert all of the bolts into the cylinder head through the manifold right here and not tighten them down all the way. We're just gonna put them there, then we're gonna connect the collector, then we're gonna tighten those the rest of the way. Just gives you a little freedom to manipulate the manifold and get the collector on there. All right, those are all in there, uh, kind of tight. So now we're gonna go underneath, do the super fun job of reconnecting the collector. All right, two of these is gonna be super easy. I'm gonna put the nut on the top, the nice lock washer to keep from vibrating out, bolt on the bottom with another lock washer to keep it from vibrating out. Now it's time to come up top and reattach all of the manifold bolts. Don't forget this part, very important. All right, my exhaust manifold is now fully reinstalled. Um, if you have an EGR valve, you're going to want to reconnect that probably on the passenger side, on the intake side there. And also if you have those little warm air tubes, you're going to want to reconnect those too. All right, I've got my exhaust manifold all reinstalled now. Everything's nice and snug. Got all those 12 millimeter bolts on the manifold hooked up. Got the collector reconnected. Got a giant hole drilled in my manifold so I could fit a bolt and a nut through there instead of putting the bolt in like I had hoped. Uh, extracting that didn't go very well, but that's okay. Um, I got my seat clamp back. I have no exhaust leaks. So I can continue to use this for more innovative purposes. And also it's important to remember that sometimes the 720s I work on are actual scrap metal when I get up. So a repair that's perfectly acceptable for a 720 like this may not be okay for your pride and joy. So if you're not okay with just drilling a hole through that or you can't, which is totally reasonable, you may have to go out and find a new manifold. I actually had a spare manifold I could have used but I wanted to save this one and keep as many 720 parts moving forward as I can because that's how I roll around here. Um, if that's not how you want to roll, that is totally okay. And you can use a new manifold or whatever you want to do. If you have any 
input you want to add, feel free to drop that in the comment section or connect with me on at Captain's Garage, my Instagram account. Uh, feel free to send me a message too if you had some Dotson related thing you wanted to talk about. All right, I'll see y'all in the next video.